Praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again. Thanks, Lord. I wanted to share that story with you, and I wanted Mark to come here and share that story with you because he says he's never had any training. He's never gone through any kind of Bible education, but he went for 30 years without ever having an opportunity to pray with someone to lead them to faith until he decided, I'm just going to take my Bible, and I'm just going to walk into the jail with some other people, and we're going to start talking. Start talking. Start talking about Jesus. Start talking about what he can do in our lives. That's where it all begins. If you have God in your head and in your heart, then let it come out of your mouth, and who knows what's going to happen. You could give birth to something phenomenal. In fact, I want to take you to the Bible, because in the book of James, there are two birth stories that we're going to look at. Two birth stories, and they come in James chapter 1, verses 13 through 18. If you have one of our Bibles here, either the red one or the... Um, landscape covered one. Uh, it's going to be on page 837. Go ahead and flip there with me. We're going to read it out loud here. I'm going to read it out loud. You can follow along. James 1, 13 through verse 18. When tempted, no one should say God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he's dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. You see, James is giving us two birth pictures here. The first, first birth picture is not so good. Uh, I'll go ahead and just outline it for you. It'll be up here on your screen. It just simply goes like this. Your desires, when lived out, when allowed to, con to conceive, when allowed to gestate in you, your desires will eventually lead to acts of sin. And then those acts of sin produce death. This is an amazing paradigm shift for us. Because honestly, if we would be honest with ourselves, pursuing my desires feels like it will be fulfilling. It feels like it will be something enriching in my life. That I've got a desire, I'm just going to go ahead and pursue it. It's going to feel good, my desire is going to be satisfied. But you know, and I know, that every time you pursue a desire to its logical end, by the time you get to the end, you realize how empty it was, how hollow it was. And along the road, from desire to emptiness, just may be a path of sin, doing things your own way, my own way, instead of God's way. So James tells us the first kind of birth that you could have a reality of in your life is this birth of death. No one wants that. No one wants to work through the labor of something to give birth to something that's just not even alive. It's a terrible, sad metaphor that he uses. But if you look at the second birth, there's something amazing here. The second birth, if we could just identify it in short terms, it's that God the giver gives us birth by giving us his truth. And the end result of the birth process is that we might become, it says, a kind of first fruits of all God has created. The first fruits of creation. Now I'm going to come back to this passage in James in just a little bit. But before we come back to James, to finish up our discussion there, I need to take a little detour to talk about what first fruits is. Uh, first fruits is a concept that we're not very familiar with today because many of us aren't farmers. And even if we are farmers, we live in a society that has such well-agricultured, well-fertilized, well-watered kinds of plants, that all the plants that come up out of the field are basically the same quality. We have, we have very genetically engineered corn, we have genetically engineered um, you know, pesticides, and all this kind of stuff. So that the stuff that comes out of the ground is almost all of the same quality. Well, if you go back ages ago, before we had any of this artificial kind of stuff, 
then the plants that grew up first were often the ones that were the strongest, the ones that got the most water, the ones that produced the best fruit. And so back in ancient times, we're looking at passages in the Old Testament where God says to his people, I want you to bring the first fruits of your harvest and give it to me. This is kind of where we get the New Testament and the current day concept of tithing. Because in the Old Testament, tithing and first fruits were interlinked with each other. Tithing is the giving of 10% of your income to God and to his work before you do anything else. And God said about the first fruits, when you harvest the first fruits, bring them to me. Well, what was he going to use them for? I mean, what does God have use for a whole bunch of wheat? He's God. He doesn't need a whole bunch of wheat, right? No, we're going to see what happens. If you look with me at Numbers, the book of Numbers, this is God's instructions to his followers, to his people, when they were wandering in the wilderness. In Numbers 18, I printed it on your note sheet here, God is speaking to the priests. In particular, he's speaking to the high priest Aaron about his family and his sons, who will be the priests in ancient Israel. And God says this, I give you all the finest olive oil, and all the finest new wine and grain, they give the Lord as the first fruits from their harvest. All the land's first fruits that they bring to the Lord will be yours. Everyone in your household who is ceremonially clean may eat it. See, what God is saying is he wants the people to bring their first fruits, and then God gives those first fruits to the priests so that they don't have to work outside of the context of the religious system that they can just simply serve God and minister to people 100% of the time, and then their needs will be met through this interchange. But what I want us to recognize today is that when we hear the word first fruits in the Bible, there is a phrase that should kind of click with us. I think it's profound. I think it's awesome. I think you should write it down. I made it up myself. Okay? <laughs> the phrase goes like this. The first fruits are the best, of the best intended to bless. They're the best of the best of the harvest, the first fruits. And then God says to Aaron and his sons, I give you the best of these things so that you can be blessed. The first fruits came from these people, right? They were the best that they had. But God's intention was that it would flow from these people to be a blessing to these people. You follow that? The first fruits are the best of the best intended to bless. Now that is a principle that God has worked through creation from the very beginning. And so when James says, we are the first fruits of creation, maybe 